Hello and welcome to the presentation, Boating Made Easy. Gone are the days when you were sold an outfit and left on your own to try and work out how to use it. So what we plan to do today is take you through all the topics involved in getting your boat ready at home, towing it down to the boat ramp, on and off the trailer, getting your boat back home, all the jobs you need to do at the end of the day to put your boat away ready for next time you want to use it. One thing we're all aware of is knowledge is essential when it comes to boating, so by following the tips we're about to give you, you'll be able to get your boat out there and have a nice safe day on the water. A safe and enjoyable trip starts with the sort of planning you're going to do at home. And the sort of planning you do obviously depends on the sort of trip you're about to undertake. Thanks, Bill. My trusty old mate Bill and I, we're not going very far offshore today, so where do we start to get our boat ready? Well, I think we might start with the safety equipment. The gear you will need to carry will vary depending on how far you're going and the regulations of the state that you live in. OK, next up's the fuel. How much fuel should we carry? Generally, a rule of thumb is always enough to get you there, get you back and get you back again. While pumping the primer bowl, check the fuel lines, check the connections, check for fuel leaks. One of the best ways to make sure your engine is going to start every time is to make sure you get it regularly serviced. But your dealer will fill you in on that. OK, we've got our life jackets, we've got our paddles, we've got plenty of fuel, we've got all the safety gear we need, fishing gear. Bill, the bungs mate, don't forget to put them in. Pretty short trip otherwise. What I'm going to do now is to trim up the engine, put down this little support arm and trim the weight of the engine back down onto that. And what that does is it takes the weight off the hydraulics for towing. OK, so that's the boat and the trailer looking good. Let's hook it up to the car. OK, we back the car and let's hook her up, Bill. What we're going to do is lift her up, set her on the, on the tow bar, secure the jockey wheel, hook up the safety chain, hook up the lights and we're ready to go. OK, we'll connect the lights. All right, Bill, if you can hit the indicators, we'll make sure they're working. OK, working good, mate. Couple more jobs to do. Just a quick check to make sure your winch cable's OK, your safety chain's on. Bill's down the back just checking the tie-down straps at the stern of the boat. We'll make sure the canopy's down, any aerial's down, all loose gear secured. I've got a bit of planning of my own to do, so I'll go and organise that, and then we're right to go. If I'm heading out on a day trip, here's what I'll do. I'll make sure I have a chart of the area, especially if I'm going into an area that I'm not very familiar with. I'll check my distances and make sure I've got enough fuel to do this trip okay. safely. All right, we're departing from here and we're looking like we're going up there. Okay, so first thing we need to do is just make sure what sort of distance we're about to travel to see if we've got enough fuel for the length of the trip. That looks about 15 nautical miles. I'll also jump on my telephone and get a current weather report of the area that we're boating in. 10 to 15 knots southeast, seas half a metre on a one metre swell. Increasing to 20 knots in the afternoon. So we'll make sure we're back by about three o'clock. When the wind picks up, we'll be well and truly home. OK, mate, who are we uh, going to let know where we're going? OK, well, we'll leave a note on the fridge at home for the family, just so that if something goes wrong, they know where we are. And when we hit the water, we'll log on with Volunteer Marine Rescue, inform them of our intentions. Right, sounds great. All right, Let's do it. we're organised. One of the secrets of launching your boat is being able to reverse in a straight line with the trailer behind your car. If you haven't done much reversing before, at first this is a little bit difficult, but the best way to practice is, is to go to a nice quiet place where there's not many people around, just reversing back, if you go crooked, straighten up again, have a quite a few goes, and it's one of those things where practice makes perfect. Something like a shopping centre, car park, or go down to the boat ramp on a nice quiet day when nobody's using it, and just practice launching your boat.
Boat ramps can be very busy places and it's only courteous that we do most of our preparation away from the ramp. Things like getting your canopies up and putting up your aerials and getting your engine ready for starting, connecting your fuel lines, trimming your engine up, putting your bungs in, releasing your tie down straps, all these things can be done away from the ramp. That way when we get there we can put the boat straight and not actually be holding anybody else up. Okay Bill, once we get these straps off and we get make sure those bungs are in mate, we're right to go. You ready, buddy? Let's go. Let's do it. Always take your time when you're reversing. Make sure you check behind. Boat ramps are very busy places. Children can quite easily run in behind the boat and you can't see them. And get in the habit of using your mirrors too to make sure you see what's going on behind you. Just take your time, nice and slow. I'm deliberately going to go crooked for a second. Okay, we've just made a bit of a blunder. So what I'll do is I'll straighten up, just drive forward again. Go back into reverse and just come back down nice and slowly. Keeping a good visual behind you at all times. Now the depth that you sink your trailer into depends on your vessel. On this small boat we're going to pull it on and off manually so all we need to do is get that back roller just under the water. So the back of the boat's sort of floating. That makes it much easier to get off. End of park or forward gear, make sure your hand brakes on so she doesn't run away on you. All right, Belle. If you can grab the painter for me, I'll just take the safety chain off. We'll release the ratchet. You got the rope, give her a little bit of a push. And if you can just go and put her on the beach there for me while I go and park the car. We'll go and see if we can get some fish, hey? Nothing to it. Okay, we just happened to run into our mate Cliff down here at the boat ramp and he's got a bit of a larger boat so he's going to show us how to actually drive his boat off. There's two methods of putting your boat on and off. We've looked at manual, now we're looking at actually driving one off. So what they'll basically do is Cliff will hop onto the boat then he'll trim the engine down into the water. He won't trim it too low because he doesn't want the propeller hitting the ramp. He'll start the engine and he'll just simply stick it into forward gear and that'll take the pressure off the winch post. Glenn up the front there is going to release the safety chain and the winch cable. And he'll give Cliff the nod to say he's ready. And Cliff will just give it a bit of reverse and just reverse the boat back off. Now that sort of method is more used for larger boats where the weight can't actually be held manually. Okay, now we're out on the water, let's have a look at how to get around out here. First thing we'll talk about is the controls. The controls has three positions. It's got a neutral, which also has a safety lock so it can't accidentally be bumped into gear. So by pulling that button up, it allows us to go into forward or reverse. Button up, push it forward, that engages forward propulsion. The further forward I push the controls, the faster the boat's going to go. If I want to slow the boat down, I pull it back till I feel the click, which is just back to an idle position, and then back into neutral. For reverse propulsion, we pull the button up and we pull it back the opposite direction. Then the further we pull it backwards, the more power we'll get into reverse. The actual steering of the vessel is achieved by the movement of the engine. As I turn the helm, you'll see the engine moves to an angle. As we engage forward propulsion, we actually change the thrust of the propeller, which makes the stern turn the opposite way to what you steer the vessel. When we look at docking our boat next to the jetty, we'll have a, we'll have a closer look at that. And the, and the next most important thing, obviously, is the trim of the vessel. When we get the boat up on the plane, like so, which I'll do now, 
will notice we can change the angle of the bow by playing with this button on the side of the controls. So as I put the power on, I feel the boat lift up out of the water. That gets it up to a planing mode. If I trim the button up, we'll actually see the bow of the boat start to lift. And if I trim too high, the bow will start bouncing and my engine will start cavitating. As I trim down, I feel the bow start to drop in the water, which is not really good. The engine loads up and the steering becomes much harder, which means we're using a lot more fuel than what we actually need to use. So trim's a feel thing and it's very important that you set it to the correct position. And just remember, your boat doesn't have any brakes. When we're on the plane, the way we stop the boat is by pulling the power back, then it's the water friction on the hull that slows the boat down. If you want to slow your boat down at slow speeds, you actually need to use reverse gear. So when you're docking next to a jetty, by engaging reverse or allowing the wind or the tide to actually be your brakes. OK, what about boats that don't have electric trim? On the smaller engines, you'll normally find a manual trim system. The way the trim's achieved on these sort of engines is by shifting the position of this trim pin. You'll see there's different holes here. If we put the pin up reasonably high, and as you can see, as I drop the engine down, the angle of the engine is much greater. Therefore, it's going to trim the bow of the vessel up. If the bow is sitting too high in that position, what I'll do is I'll drop the pin down a bit lower, like so. And that'll get the angle of the engine down a bit further. OK, so why might you want to change your trim? Well, that sort of do with the weight distribution on your vessel. If we had a lot of people up the front or a lot of camping gear up the front, for example, the bow of the vessel is going to want to sit deeper in the water. So therefore, I'd need to move the pin up a little bit higher, get the angle on the engine a little bit greater, and as we're up on the plane, that'll sit the bow up a bit higher. If we had no weight on the bow, most of the weight was down the stern of the vessel, we want to drop the bow of the, of the vessel deeper into the water. We'd actually drop the pin down, therefore the bow would sit lower in the water. It's pretty straightforward, and once again, it's one of those things you need to get the feel of. Just remember, there's lots of other rules to apply on the water, and we don't have time to cover them all in this very short video, but they're mentioned in your Quintrex Boating Handbook, and they're also mentioned in our boat licence courses. OK, when anchoring, it's important that we, we actually assess what's going on with the wind or the tide. Obviously, your boat's going to lay in the direction of the wind or tide, or whichever's strongest. We checked the tide times this morning, and the tide's running out at the moment, we know that, so the way we're pointing is good. I'll just get you to get ready, get the anchor out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the boat from going forward, and I'm going to engage a little bit of reverse, just to get some backwards movement. That way, we're not going to run over the anchor with our propeller. So away you go. A bit of backwards movement, so the anchor's not going to wrap around our propeller. We're reversing the same way that the tide's going to carry us. I'll go into neutral. Now, it's important we put out enough rope, or that's called the scope of your anchor. Normally three times is enough in very calm conditions, but in heavy or strong or windy conditions, you may need up to five times the depth of water for your rope. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just tie it off there. Around the cleat. Good. The next thing to do is to make sure our anchor's not dragging, and the easiest way to do that is line up a couple of trees. We look pretty stationary at the moment. So we can have a fish, mate. We're not going to go anywhere. It's looking good. Looks like there's nothing here, mate. I think we've caught them all. Let's go and try somewhere else. OK, we'll get the anchor up. Just take your position. I'll just start the motor up. OK, I'm not going to let Bell do all the work. I'll actually drive the boat up to the anchor for him. So if you can just untie it off the cleat there, and I'll go into forward gear, and as I do that, just pull the slack in on the line. When we get close, I won't be able to actually be able to see the rope, so you let me know when it's directly below the bow. I'll go back into neutral and you can just pull it off the bottom, and I've saved you a lot of hard work. Okay. In a boat of this size, it's not too bad, but in larger boats, you definitely want to drive the boat up to the anchor to take a bit of a bit of relief off the person retrieving, because it's quite hard to pull a, a six metre boat up in strong tide when you're trying to pull on that anchor line. Well done, mate. OK, let's go and have a look and see what we can find elsewhere. OK, let's go and find a spot to tie the boat up. One of the most important things when doing your docking alongside a jetty is same as anchoring, you need to allow for the wind and tide. 
we're going to park in a marina here at the moment, so the wind and tide really isn't going to be an issue. But always approach into the wind or into the tide, whatever's strongest. And like I mentioned earlier, your boat doesn't have any brakes. It's not like a car, it doesn't have brakes. The brakes are the water friction on the hull when you reduce your power, or you can go into reverse if you want to stop the boat much quicker than that. When we're doing our docking, we'll pick our spot. Always, always get your ropes and your fenders ready nice and early. And communicate with the people that are helping you. OK, Bill, if you can get ready, mate. What we're going to do is approach at a very shallow angle by going in reverse and turning towards the jetty when we get there. That'll pull the stern of the boat in towards the jetty. We don't need to have our own ropes because the ropes are normally supplied in marinas. Remember, always slowly. Take your time. If you come in too fast to make a mistake, you will damage your boat. Simple as that. Into forward to slow down back into neutral. I've got a nice little angle there. Okay, I'll go into neutral. The boat's still got forward momentum. A little bit of reverse. Turning towards the jetty at the same time to pull the stern in. Back into neutral. Grab your lines. Looks nice and secure. Let's go and get some lunch. All right, I'll just get you to get the ropes. Before we do, make sure you start your engine first. If you throw the ropes off and start the end, and the engine won't start, you're drifting away down the channel and you've got all sorts of problems. Yep. Okay, and you get. Just reverse off nice and gently. Remember your boat steers from the back. Just watching where you're going, making sure you're not going to back out into any boats. Maneuver yourself nice and clear. Into forward gear and away we go. OK, Bill, let's have a look at getting the boat back out of the water. Now, there's two ways of doing this. One is doing it manually for smaller boats like this one, where we can just position the bow, hook on the winch cable and wind it up. A lot of the larger boats actually use a drive-on method, where the boat's too hard to, to handle manually. So what they do is they'll back their trailer in and actually drive the boat onto the trailer. We'll look at that a bit later on, but we'll put the boat up on the beach. I'll run up and get the car. Mm -hmm. I'll just get you to hold the boat for me while I do that. If you're by yourself, obviously you need to drop the anchor or tie it to something. Okay. It's important we put the trailer into the depth that we require. Not too deep. Just deep enough so we can get the boat onto the rollers nice and easily. Sun safe, mate. Okay. All right, let's have a look at putting this thing on manually. Pretty simple. All we're going to do is just manually walk it over, put the bow of the vessel or the keel part of the vessel on the rollers. Then I'll simply walk the chain, walk the cable down and we'll hook it up. Okay, can you just hold this for me, please, Bill? That's it. Okay, just make sure the keel sits central on that roller. Good. Release our little ratchet here. Keeping your cable or your strap nice and straight without any kinks in it. Hook them into there. Click your ratchet back over. And I'll simply wind while you keep it nice and straight. Easy as that. Now before we do anything else, before we drive the boat up, two things to check. Number one, we put the safety chain on. Number two, is the engine trimmed high enough so we don't drag it along the ramp as we pull it out.
As we mentioned earlier, there was two methods of putting your boat on the trailer. Cliff's about to show us the drive-on method. So what he does is he comes in with a nice straight approach, trims his engine up high enough so it won't hit the ramp, and he's hoping to get the keel of the boat along those rollers, and the V section of the trailer helps him do that. Okay, then he'll apply some power to set the boat up nice and high on the trailer. While leaving the boat into forward gear, we'll attach the safety chain and the cable. And once that's done, Cliff can turn his engine off, trim the engine up and hop out of the boat and drive the car away. OK, now we've got the boat out of the water. And once again, for courtesy, we pulled it away from the ramp so we're not holding anybody up. Just a couple little jobs to do. Things like dropping your canopies, putting down your antennas, putting on your tie-down straps, making sure your bungs are out to release any water out of the bilge of the vessel, securing any loose objects so they don't blow out on the highway for the tow home. And most importantly, just before we go, Bill, I'll just go up to the car and flick the indicators and the brakes on. Can you just have a look to quick check to make sure they're working, mate? OK. Good stuff. <laughs> What a day. It's not quite over yet, mate. Still a couple of jobs to do. OK, before you put your boat away in its storage position, there's still a few things we need to do. Obviously, the boat needs a good wash down to remove all the salt. Not only the boat, but also the trailer and the engine. We're going to hook the earmuffs up, run some fresh water through it to remove all the seawater, which may cause corrosion. Disconnect the batteries, clean all our safety gear and dry it, and get it ready for next time. If we do all our work properly, our boat will stay in good condition. These are a set of earmuffs, and what we do with these is slide them over the suction points of the leg of the engine, like so, and we're going to connect the garden hose. OK, Bell, turn the water on, mate. OK, so this is pretty important, and what we're trying to achieve here is to push all the seawater out of the engine, which will cause corrosion. We run it for about five minutes, long enough for the thermostats to open up and push all the salt water out. Replacing it with fresh water, then the motor's going to stay in excellent internal condition. OK, and while we're waiting for the engine to flush, We'll do the rest of our job, stick her away in the shed, and we'll be ready for our next great boating adventure. Thanks, Bill. So there you have it. As you can see, a little bit of knowledge does go a long way. So on behalf of Quintrex and the Australian Boating College, we hope you've enjoyed the show. Get out there and enjoy your boating, and most importantly, be safe.